How many of you are perfectionists? How many of you are told that you are perfectionists? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's me too. Well, let me tell you something. We are not gods. We cannot become gods, and we will never, ever, ever be gods. Yet someone keeps putting this idea in our head, right, that we can become perfect. So we spend so much energy to try and become perfect. That level of perfection is our goal. Oh, how curiosity electrifies us. But what if, and imagine with me, what if we were perfect? No acne, could you imagine? No heart disease, no need for vaccines. We could be immortal. But in order to get there, to get to that step, right, we have to skip evolution, because that, take, that takes too long. We have to. We could genetically modify our children, our babies. Have any of you ever held a baby? Oh my goodness, they're so cute. Felt their soft little cheek, held their firm grasp, noticed how fragile their bodies are. It's so easy to throw away the uniqueness of humanity, of human life, when we have these fantastical, unfeasible goals that allure us. So the question is, should we genetically modify our own children? Well, let's put it to the rotary forward test, shall we? Is it the truth? Back in November, Dr. He Jiankui, a Chinese doctor and researcher, supposedly successfully genetically modified a pair of twins, two beautiful young girls. Now, the reason for this experiment was to alter their genes so that their embryos would not succumb to the gene that opens the door to the HIV virus. Dr. He Jiankui claims that all this work was for that noble cause when breaking research guidelines for implanting a human embryo, a modified human embryo into a human. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that this is human experimentation. The one that we're taught to hate in movies. Are we ready as a society? Before we even contemplate the ethicality, we must decide, even in this time of modern medicine, modern science, modern technology, are we ready? Dr. He Jenkwe used a special gene editing tool called CRISPR-Cas9. It allows you to cut the gene wherever you'd like. Now, it has been found that this gene scissors of the century has been less accurate than ideal. What happens then? Nature Biotechnology published a cited article. In fact, the title is Repair of Double-Strand Breaks, that double strand being the DNA that makes us who we are, induced by CRISPR-Cas9, leads to deletions and complex rearrangements. What does that mean? Mistakes. Those are mistakes. With genes, mistakes cannot happen because people die when mistakes are made. And are we willing to sacrifice for science, for perfection? We have diseases all over the world. That is a definite, undeniable truth. People are suffering as we know it. However, we need not toy with the genes, the lives of our own offspring. Is it fair to all concerned? Well, again, let's think of the most important aspect here, our children, our future. Imagine a young boy, his name is Johnny, and he's in school at the moment. He's got dark, smooth skin, a perfected chiseled chin, and healthy young brown eyes. See how he's playing with his classmates on the playground? Notice how he is mocked, ridiculed, for his weird eye color. Does that sound fair to you? Because I have brown eyes. I hope it doesn't sound fair to you. If we are ever able to safely genetically modify our children, it's going to become a paid service because that's how our, our economy, that's how our society works. Our society already has way too many isms, classism, racism, anti-Semitism, you name it. We are called to celebrate the diversity that is life. And guess what? We get that diversity already without any modifications. The magic of humanity, can you believe it? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Having another ism in an already divided society doesn't really help 
anyone because babies are not accessories. They're true masterpieces. So how can we ruin art, art that has stood the test of time? I am a daughter of Nigerian Americans, meaning that when I started public school, it was very difficult for me. Each and every day was a challenge. I spoke differently than the other students, especially the students that shared my skin color. Ain't wasn't really in my vocabulary. Sorry, not sorry. There was a barrier between me and my classmates. But the concept behind the barrier was not that I was necessarily different. Oh, no, 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 no. It was that I was not, I was unequipped to overcome it. What a sad story. Having that ism, that divide, I'm still trying to feel normal in school today. Each and every day, I have to compare myself. I don't have to. I, I, it's, I don't have to, but it's, I compare myself to the other students, and I still find myself trying to feel normal. Having that ism, that divide, we're supposed to be celebrating, coming together because of our differences, and not the opposite. Is it beneficial to all concerned? Our children will become dolls to be compared and not individuals to be loved from the very bottom of our hearts. Is that beneficial? But what about humanity? Our beauty is in our imperfection. At least that's what I read in those teenage romance stories. So without our flaws, without our imperfection, don't we also lose our humanity? Our babies are our invaluable future. They are precious. And genetically modifying them, according to this test, and altogether failing it, is inefficient, dangerous, and immoral. Because we are not gods. Thank you.